You know, there's really only one small difference between the Wii U and the Switch, and that's that the Switch actually has games. Whether you just picked yourself up a brand new shiny crisp Nintendo Switch for Christmas, or you've had one this entire time like I have, either way we're all wondering the same thing, and that is, what games can we expect to play on this thing in 2019? I'm gonna break mine if I don't put it down. <laughs> well, to make it easy on you guys, just like at the start of last year, I have compiled a list of 15 games, some of the best we will see on the system this year. And I gotta say, 2019 is shaping up to be a very exciting year, even with what we know already just going into the year. There's a little bit of everything, from first party Nintendo franchises finally making a return on the Switch, but also we have a load of games we already love being ported to the system, and then finally just a bunch of brand new cool looking games come into the console. With all that being said, we have a lot of games to talk about today and I'm already losing my voice, so how about I just shut up and get started. My name is Mr. Potato Head, make sure you have a flip all over that subscribe button. Now let's get to talking about some Switch games. The first game actually comes out really soon on the 17th of this month, and that's Yik, a postmodern RPG. This game immediately stood out to me because I took one look at it and I thought, this is so obviously inspired by games like Earthbound and I love that game. And sure enough, the more I looked into the game, the more correlations I started to draw between the two. Just like in Earthbound, where you use kind of unconventional weapons, like a yo-yo or a baseball bat, in Yik, you find yourself with similar weapons, like a vinyl record. And then last year at PAX South, I actually got to play this game, and it blew away my expectations. Very quirky, very unique, and you can tell a load of passion went into this game. And then the day after that, on January 18th, you can finally look forward to playing Travis Strikes Again. For those that haven't played the No More Hero games on the Wii, you're kind of in luck because this game is nothing like those games really. However, I do strongly recommend going back and playing those games. You owe it to yourself. Travis Strikes Again appears to be more of a spin-off title, adopting a gameplay style similar to Fury. And I love the characters and story of No More Heroes, and I absolutely adore the gameplay of Fury, so for me, this might be a perfect mesh. Either way, you can always expect greatness from Grasshopper Studios. They have made some of my favorite games, and they do not disappoint. Sonic Team Racing, a brand new Sonic Racing game on the Switch, and I, for one, am pumped. I loved the first two games, and next to Mario Kart, this is my favorite racing game. And so we have a brand new one coming to Switch. Hopefully it runs better than Sonic Racing on Wii U, because I remember that looking and running pretty bad. <laughs> I don't think that'll be the case this time. Yoshi's Crafted World. I can't believe I'm still talking about this game as an upcoming title. I made one of these exact videos at the start of last year for upcoming games, and I put that game in that video because I fully expected that game to be out last year, everyone did. But here we are, still talking about it as an upcoming game, although we finally have a release date, it's in March. And to be fair, as someone who has played a lot of the Yoshi games, it does look like one of the best ones. I really love the whole gimmick and mechanic of the game, allowing you to flip the world around and play it backwards. So let's just hope it was worth the wait, and not only five hours long like Kirby was. Trials Rising releases in February, and I really want to show this game some support since it's published by Ubisoft and Ubisoft goes out of their way to support Nintendo. And honestly, I usually love Ubisoft games. Mario and Rabbids was fantastic, Zombie U was pretty good, Red Steel is a game. So while I will admit Trials Rising isn't something that I usually would play, I will give this one a shot. As of recording this right now, it was actually only yesterday that out of nowhere, Dragon's Dogma was announced for the Switch. It was also given a release date of pretty soon, April. And that's what I meant at the start of the video by expect secrets and surprises. But at any given time, a game can just be like, hey, I'm gonna be on the Switch in a few months, look forward to playing me. So Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen will include all previously released content and DLC. Capcom even promised a revamped user interface that will offer improved screen visibility on Switch. This game was released back on PlayStation 3 and 360, and if I remember correctly, the text was really small and hard to read. And that's playing on a TV, so yeah, if you had it on a handheld system exactly the way it was, I imagine you'd either have to play like this or use a magnifying glass. So yeah, I hope they do revamp that interface. The game does appear to be identical to the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 versions way back in 2013, so you are gonna get the full experience. To me, this game kinda looks like what would happen if you took Monster Hunter and Yeez 8 and kinda just meshed them together. Sounds cool, right? 
Well, get it in April then, I guess. I'm Mr. Potato Head. Oh, the long-awaited main series Fire Emblem game releasing in 2019. We're finally able to actually get excited about it because we're in the year. I think this game is going to be huge, so set your sights on it. I'm looking forward to it. Hey, so also in April, we get even more Shovel Knight. After almost five years, has it really been that freaking long? The Shovel Knight story is coming to an end. Shovel Knight King of Cards is the fourth and final campaign campaign in the series. It's a prequel to the game starring King Knight on his quest to become king. I mean, this one speaks for itself. It's just Shovel Knight. I, I don't gotta get you guys excited for it. I know you're on board. If you enjoyed this game, Retro City Rampage, you'll probably also love its sequel that's coming to Switch, no surprise, Shakedown Hawaii. This one is set 30 years after the major events in Retro City Rampage. Yet again, it features an open world, destructible environments, and the 16-bit visuals we fell in love with last time. Here's the thing. If you haven't played these games, if you've never experienced a 16-bit open world game, you really don't know what you're missing. Kind of hard to explain, but it's an entirely different experience. Especially if you're a little older like me and you grew up playing the NES and the Super Nintendo. We never got an open world game in that style. The systems couldn't really handle it. Essentially, imagine taking that first GTA that released on PlayStation 1, bringing it to Super Nintendo and having it back on that system with those graphics. It's a really awesome experience. I recommend playing the first one and getting caught up before the sequel. Hey, remember when all those Final Fantasies were announced to be coming to Switch? Well, we're getting some physical releases for a couple of them. Final Fantasy X and X2 HD Remaster is coming out on Switch this year, as well as Final Fantasy XII. I feel like these games speak for themselves and probably sell themselves, so I'll just say that I'm excited to play Final Fantasy X again. I haven't played the other two. But now's my chance, right? Here's a really interesting one to me anyway, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. I remember playing both the first two games. Actually, I 100%ed both of them back on the Xbox 360, and I enjoyed them. Playing them with friends, it was a pretty good time, but I never really thought they were amazing games, they were just okay. So I was never surprised that they didn't make a third one. But obviously, thanks to all the Marvel movies and the Avengers being so big, I get the line of thinking, it still just came out of nowhere for me. Nonetheless, it is being made and it's only on Nintendo Switch. It's actually a Switch exclusive, which is kind of even weirder. But I'm not complaining, I'll take Switch exclusives wherever I can get them. Look forward to Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 exclusively on Nintendo Switch this year. So here's two really cool ones, and then we'll do a few honorable mentions, and then we'll go on to the last really big ones. You following me? Okay. We have Doom Eternal and Mortal Kombat 11. It's really cool that Doom Eternal is being ported to the Switch at the same time as the other consoles. Obviously, the first Doom, or at least the first reboot of Doom, found its way to Switch about a year after it was initially released. Panic Button is once again taking care of Doom Eternal on Switch. And then Mortal Kombat 11 is releasing in April. This is cool because we haven't seen a Mortal Kombat game on the Nintendo Switch system since the Wii in 2006. 13 years! since Mortal Kombat has been on Nintendo. And I can't wait to get gory again on a Nintendo console. Okay, a couple special mentions. We have Wargroove coming out this year. I wanted to bring this to everyone's attention because I know a load of people have wanted another Advance Wars game. Well, you might not be getting an actual sequel to those games anytime soon, but Wargroove was inspired by Advance Wars. So you can thank the developer Chucklefish for finally itching that turn-based tactic scratch you've been looking for ever since the GBA. Also, I wanted to mention a game called Minico, I think that's how you pronounce it. Minico's Night Market. I have a good feeling about this game. It's giving me Animal Crossing vibe. And while we do have an actual Animal Crossing coming this year, and we, we are getting to that, it doesn't mean that this game won't be fun as well. It's a whimsical simulation adventure game about crafting crafts, catting cats, eating eats, and friending friends. At least that's the description I read online. The game's story revolves around a curious girl named Minico who has just moved to her new home and the island is overrun by cats. It just has a cute art style and I think you guys might enjoy it. And I want to mention both Bayonetta 3 and Metroid Prime Trilogy here, because while these games do not have a set release date for 2019, it's my personal belief that Bayonetta 3 will release at some point this year. And I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that Metroid Prime Trilogy will release this year. 
In fact, I'm even more sure that they're going to announce it pretty soon. I have been hearing way too much about it, way too much excitement, and honestly, it makes way too much sense. But it hasn't been announced yet, so it's just speculation. And so, of course, that leaves Luigi's Mansion 3 and Animal Crossing. Two games I feel very much speak for themselves and every Switch and non-Switch owner are probably fully aware that these games are coming out this year. You put those with every other game I've talked about today and then of course all the other games that are coming out, I have not talked about all of them. And then all those secrets and surprises I keep talking about and 2019, as I said, is shaping up to a very exciting year. If you like this video or you learned a little something, make sure you have a lift all over that subscribe button. Click or tap on this video right here because I'd really appreciate it. And before I completely lose my voice tonight, I'm out of here. Enjoy your Switch this year, I know I will.